SolidWorks has many tools available for replicating geometry, such as linear patterns, circular patterns, and mirror feature tools. But there are some other lesser used powerful tools that can be used to replicate geometry. In this lesson, you'll learn about the sketch driven and the table driven pattern tools. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. To start with, let's take a look at sketch driven patterns. Sketch driven patterns allow you to replicate the seed geometry based on a sketch that contains sketch points. You can pattern features, faces, and bodies with the sketch driven pattern. In this demonstration, we will use the sketch driven pattern tool to replicate this D25 circular cut. Before launching the sketch driven pattern tool, we first need to create a sketch, and this sketch will contain the sketch points which will mark the locations of the pattern instances. Also, don't forget you can download the exercise files in the descriptions of this video. These files were created in SolidWorks 2019, so you'll need 2019 or newer to be able to open these parts. Begin by clicking on the front face of this part and going to Sketch. We want to create a center line from the middle of this cutout straight over to the far side edge of the part. Up in the Sketch tab of the Command Manager, look for the Point command, and we want to drop three points on this center line anywhere. Click OK. And the next thing we want to do is dimension these points. So from the circle, from the center of the circle to the first point will be 80. And then from the point to the center of the circle again will be 130. And the final one will be 250. So you should have 80, 130, and 250 for our three sketch points on that center line. Exit the sketch, and you should be seeing something similar on your screen. It's also important to note here that the sketch driven pattern tool only recognizes sketch points as the locations of the instances. This means that anything else in your sketch, such as lines, center lines, or other geometry, will just be ignored. We are now ready to start our sketch driven pattern tool. You can activate this by two ways either going to Insert Pattern Mirror and then Sketch Driven Pattern, or on the Features tab of the Command Manager, look for the Linear Pattern tool, click on the little drop down arrow which will expand that command, and you'll find the Sketch Driven Pattern tool. So click on that to activate it. In this case, it's automatically selected the sketch we want to use, but in case it is not selected, you should see something like this. And so the first thing it's asking you to select is the sketch on which the instances are going to be based, which was that sketch we just created. So you can either click it on the graphics area. If for some reason it's too hard to do that, you can just expand the feature manager tree to see all your features and then select this sketch from that location. And that should fill it in. The next thing is to select features, faces, or bodies. In our case, we have a circular cut feature. So we want the features selection box activated. And again, you can either click it in the graphics window or through the feature manager tree. So click on the D25 feature. And when you do that, you should see a preview similar to what I have on screen now. There are some additional options such as geometry pattern. Geometry pattern will mean it will only copy the geometry, but it will not copy any end conditions of that feature. If you want more information on this, see the previous lesson, uh, which covers this in more detail. The other options just control the actual preview, and we won't go into further detail on those. One option to be aware of is the reference point up the top here, and you either can select centroid or selected point. Centroid should be selected by default, but if our cut were asymmetric or made up of multiple features, we could also use the selected point option to select a position for locating the instances. For this demonstration, I have everything set up the way we want it, so if you have something similar, you can click OK to accept the pattern. And you should be seeing something like this on screen now. So we've just created our sketch driven pattern. To edit an existing sketch driven pattern, there are two things that we can edit it through. The first is to click on our 
sketch driven pattern feature that we created and go to edit feature. And this is where we'll be able to control either the features you've selected or the actual sketch we're using. The other way we can do it is to actually, if we want to change the, say the, the distances of the instances, we can edit the original sketch we created. So you should see the sketch there and you may want to rename it for clarity. Otherwise you can click on that and go to edit sketch. And from here, change our dimensions. So we could change that to 230 and accept. And you can see it's now updated the position of this feature. So be aware there are two ways of editing a sketch driven pattern. Now let's take a look at a demonstration of the table driven pattern tool. Table driven patterns allow you to create instances of a seed feature, faces or body based on XY coordinates. We first need to create an XY coordinate system similar to how we had to create a sketch for the sketch driven pattern tool. I won't go into too much detail about creating coordinate systems, but to create one in this demonstration, go to the features tab of the command manager, look for the reference geometry icon and click on the arrow to expand the tool and then click on coordinate system. You should see the property manager appear for your coordinate system. The first thing we need to do is select an origin starting point, which will be this bottom corner. So click on that. Next, it is asking for an X axis. So click on the bottom edge of the part, and then it will ask for a Y axis. So click on this left side of the part. You should notice a little XY coordinate gimbal in the corner of your coordinate system. And you may notice that the Y or X axis is facing in the wrong direction. To change the direction of it, you will see a reverse direction button. You can just click on that to switch the direction. So it should look something like this with the X sort of pointing to the right of the part and the Y pointing upwards of the part. If it's looking like that and the Z axis won't matter in this demonstration. So as long as it's X and Y like this, click OK to accept. And that is how you create a coordinate system for our table driven pattern. Now we can launch the table driven pattern tool and to make it a little easier to view our preview and the pattern, we might, might want this part to be facing towards us. So to do that, you can click on the face and just look for an icon saying normal two. This should rotate it into view. So it's now perpendicular to our view. To start the table driven pattern tool, similar to the sketch driven pattern tool, you can either go to the insert menu, pattern mirror and find it here, the table driven pattern or look for the linear pattern tool, drop that down and go to table driven pattern. And when you do that, you should see this table driven pattern dialog appear. And you can just drag that around if it's in the way. Uh, so we'll just drag it off to the side here. If it has already selected features for you, we can just clear that by right clicking on it and going to clear selections. So in this dialog box, the first is a read from file. So if you have some XY data coordinates in an Excel spreadsheet or Word document, uh, you can browse for it and add it in this case. But in our demonstration, we're going to manually add the data ourselves so we can skip this section. The next section we want to pick is the coordinate system. So click in this box and we want to click on our coordinate system in our feature manager tree. The next is either features, bodies, or faces. And in our case, the cutout is a feature. So we can click on the feature selection box and we want to click on the D35. And when we do that, you will notice that uh, some cells appear similar to like an Excel spreadsheet. So it's already added the values for the first cutout for us, the 220 and 70 based on our coordinate system. So it's looking in the X direction 220 and then it's looking in the Y direction 70 and that's how it's basing that first location. To create additional instances, all we need to do is double click on one of these cells and start adding data. So let's add a few instances. The first one is going to be 50 and 230. One after that, 110 and 130. And the final one is going to be 250, 190. So as you do that, you should see these previews appear of our data points. If the preview I'm seeing is what you're seeing on your screen, we can accept that, click OK, and we have now created our table-driven pattern. To make changes to an existing table-driven pattern, 
you can just click on the feature and go to edit feature. And from here, you could change your coordinate system or change your features, faces, bodies, or just add more instances or even change existing instances. So for example, maybe we change this to 230 and then we add another one, another 230 and 170. And we can see it is going to overlap a bit. So we'll give that a little bit more space, maybe 150. And there we go. So we can click OK. And that's how you edit an existing table driven pattern. The final step in this demonstration is to hide this sketch for our sketch driven pattern as we no longer need to show this sketch. So you can do that by either clicking on the sketch and going to hide, or if it's a bit too difficult to click on it in the graphics window for some reason, you can just go to the feature manager tree, click on it and look for the hide icon and click on that. And now if we go to an isometric view, you can no longer see that sketch in the graphics window. So both the sketch driven and the table driven pattern tools are very powerful. It's best to be aware of these tools because you may not ever use them, but as long as you're aware of them, you may come across those situations where it's beneficial to use these tools. And that's why as long as you practice using them once and just retain them in your memory, it's better than not knowing them at all. So that brings us to the end of the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.